badass business owners. Welcome to another episode of the Local Small Business Coach Podcast, where each episode we work on getting you to $100,000 in take-home pay. So if you're all ready to boost your profits, increase your sales, improve your processes, and develop stronger teams so you can stop living job to job, then let's dive in. Hey, badass business owners. How are you doing? Welcome back to another episode of the Local Small Business Coach Podcast. All right. Are you excited as I am? Yes, we are in part three of our three-week series on how you can increase your sales. Let's face it. You all want to grow your business. You all want to make more money. And ultimately, the goal is about putting more money in your pocket. But at the same time, we all understand that We need to drive sales to be able to create some of that. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm hoping in the next week, maybe two, I'm going to dive into the profit side of this entire equation because more sales doesn't always equate to more profits, but we're going to dive into that. But for now, the goal is let's try to see how we can get you some more sales. Maybe you're at the beginning of your business. Maybe you're in the middle. Maybe you've been doing it for a while. It doesn't really matter. The goal is how do you create more sales? And if you might recall, if you haven't listened to the first two parts of the uh, series, I'm going to go ahead and do a quick update. Basically, sales come from one of three buckets. So you either need to create new customers coming into your business or bucket two, which is you need to increase the number of times they frequent your business. So frequency. And then the third bucket is your dollar average, your ticket average, how much money that they spend with you. In today's episode, we're going to dive into how do you get them to spend more money with you. Uh, Now, before we do that, I just want to kind of check in a little bit. First off, I want to thank all of the new folks that are coming to the podcast. Uh, Some of you guys have been uh, dropping in to the uh, Facebook group, Badass Local Small Business Owners. Some of you have reached out to me through email. I'm seeing it in the numbers with who's listening. And I want to personally welcome every single one of you. If you're newer to the podcast, or maybe this is the first time you've listened to the podcast, thank you. Uh, This is the show that's all about you and helping you grow your business uh, and make more money. Uh, You know, there's not a lot of shows out there that are dedicated to to, to me, what I call the unsung heroes of each of our communities, because I really do believe that our communities are strong because of the business owners that are busting their butt every single day inside of our communities. Uh, when you see ghost towns and, and towns that have fallen apart, you always hear stories about how they started to lose the businesses. Uh, it really is the businesses that keep our towns going. And it's folks like yourselves that do that. Uh, but to me, there's a lot of people out there that help business, you know, small business owners, but people that are online and different types of businesses, but rarely do they focus on you. And this show is all about you. This is who I focus on. I focus on those of you that are in your community trying to make something happen. And uh, that's my passion. And hopefully you'll stick around and uh, come to have have some fun with us and know that each week uh, we talk about you and your needs. Uh, if you like what you're hearing, you can always go back. There's like 200 episodes before this one. You can go listen to those. Uh, or all you got to do is make sure you hit that subscribe button so you never miss an episode going forward. All right, enough of that. But thank you. Thanks for being here. All right. Uh, what I want to do before we jump in is I do want to go over a quote for the week. I saw this quote the other day and I was like, oh my gosh, I totally need to share it uh, and then explain why. The quote is this, you can't have a million dollar dream with a minimum wage work ethic. You cannot have a million dollar dream with a minimum wage work ethic. And that's by Stephen Hogan. And you know, (laughs) It's funny because this one made me actually think of you guys because I think it actually helps describe small business owners like yourselves because you believe in the dream. The whole reason you went into business was to to take ownership and love of your own um, your future and to make what happen what it is that you know you're capable of making for your family. Some of you were tired of you know just doing uh, the day to day stuff, making the minimum amount of money that you could make with what it is that you were doing. You didn't have a minimum wage work ethic. That wasn't okay with you. You didn't just want to just skate by and 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 do the little bit that you need to do. You know we've all met people that just clock in and do their job and go home. That's not you guys. You guys bust your butt. You're working sixty, seventy, some of you eighty. 80 hours a week hustling, trying to make things done. You, 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 uh, 
you have a vision, you have a million dollar dream. And maybe million dollars might not be the exact number that you have. For some of you, I think it is. Some of you, it might be $200,000 a year. Uh, some of you, it might be two fifty. dollars Some of you, it might be hundred. Heck, for some of you, you're probably like, Tammy, I'd settle for getting to 50 right now. You know what? But the, the point is that you are ready to hustle and make things happen. That, you know what? You have a work ethic that is is amazing and is crazy. Um, and how do I know that? Because you wouldn't be listening to this podcast. If you were just someone that was just going through the motions, there's no way you would reach out to try to learn more to be a better business person. And each and every one of you that is listening to this podcast today is here because you want to get better at what it is that you do. Um, so yeah, I really love this quote. You cannot have a million dollar dream with a minimum wage work ethic. You know what? You guys do not have a minimum wage work ethic. You guys have the dream and the hustle and you're making crap happen. And I am proud to be part with you guys uh, in spending time with you and being part of that journey. So I really, really appreciate that. All right, with that, let's go ahead and jump into part three of this series uh, in Two episodes ago, in episode, I want to say 214, uh, it's weird because they don't number them anymore, so it, it throws me off, but I number them for my sake. But uh, in that one, we talked about uh, how, uh, you know, we went over, I think it was like nine or 10 different ways that you could uh, bring in more customers into your business. Uh, you know, that's obviously one of the more tough ways to do it. I mean, getting new customers is difficult. Uh, they're cold customers. They're not using you today. They're, they're not... Uh, uh, as familiar with your business, but that's what a lot of us go for is we we go after how do we get more people? That's probably the number one bucket for new sales that people go after. And there's a time and a place for that. And you should always try to find new customers. So I'm not saying don't do it, but it's also not the only bucket that you want to hang out in. So if you're looking to find new ways to get more customers, you want to go back and listen to that episode. Last week, we talked about frequency. How do you get them to come back more often? Uh, for example, we talked about the fact that grocery stores want you to come back three times a week. Uh, other businesses have a model that's based off of you coming back every day or uh, at least once a month or whatever the case may be. And regardless of the type of business you have, we talked about, you know, I think it was another nine or 10 ways in which you could get customers to come back more often, more frequently. Uh, so that's a, another bucket that you want to go back and listen to, to make sure you've got. And in our third bucket here, we're going to talk about the average dollar that they spend with you, the the average ticket, if you will, uh, your dollar average. You know, at the end of the day, uh, you want people to spend as much money as possible. Now, for some of you, you have a set fee. Every, you know, you have one thing that you deliver, one price, and that's what it is. And you might be thinking, well, how do I get them to spend more? I only do one thing. Well, today you're going to walk away with some ideas and some things that you can do to get them to spend more money. So I promise we're going to reach out to you. And for the rest of you, you might be thinking, Tammy, I've got this big ticket thing. I mean, what, what else can I do? We're going to have stuff for you as well. Um, you know, my goal is we're going to have a bunch of different things that we're going to brainstorm together here that are different ways. Uh, you know, right now I know some of you are thinking, oh, well, I can't raise my prices. And for some reason, that is always the go-to thing when people say, how do I get them to spend more money? I need to raise my prices. Well, that is one way. Honestly, raising your prices is one way. And that might be the right thing. It doesn't necessarily mean you have to raise your prices across the board, but it could be that you might have one or two services or products that you could inch that up a little bit. Um, but hold off on that one for a minute. We're going to come back. And that is one of the things that we're going to talk about. But I just wanted to let you know that there are a bunch of ways that you can increase your average ticket without necessarily changing your pricing. Um, although that is part of it. Now, here's, here's why this can kind of be important. Because remember, one of the examples I've been using all the way through is that if you had 100 customers spending $50 that would get you $5,000. So obviously, if we get them to spend a little bit more money, you know, it, our goal is to get them up to that 5,500. In episode, the first episode, we talked about going from 100 customers and getting 10 new customers. And if you got 10 new customers at that $50, we were going to get to your 5,500. In the second part of our episode series, which was last week, we talked about frequency. If you got 10 of those 100 customers to come back an extra time, then you would end up with 10 more frequency at the $50, which would be the same $500, which would also get you to that $5,500. So 
today we're going to talk about ticket average. So let's just say you have those 100 customers spending the 50. If you could get those customers to spend $55, guess what? The 100 times the 55 is also going to get you to the 5,500. So obviously all three ways can get you to the 5,500. Now, in some cases, you can do a combination of everything. Um, that's absolutely true. But for today, we're just going to focus on that dollar average. So how do you get them to spend more money? Now, more money could be something as simple as a dollar more. Uh, and in some cases, it could be that you want them to spend five, ten dollars more. Uh, it, it, and it really depends upon your individual business on who can do what. But there, there is definitely a number that you could get them to do um, within your business. And that's something that you'll have a better idea of here shortly. So with that, I'm just going to go ahead and jump in and we'll use some different examples and we'll talk about different ways as we go through. Now, earlier I was talking about raising your prices. So yeah, let's just put that one. That's the, the big one. You need to raise your prices. Uh, now, raising your prices could look like a lot of different things. It could be something as simple as, uh, you know what, it's the end of the year, you're raising your prices, uh, you're letting your people know in advance, hey, our service is normally $55, we're going to go up to uh, $56, $57, $60. You know, you can pick what that number is, uh, you know, and it's going to be different uh, based off of whatever that particular thing. But just never underestimate what even $1 can do. Because if you have, let's just say in the course of a year, you have a thousand customers in the course of the year and you raise it a dollar, guess what? You're going to make a thousand dollars more in your business. Uh, now, in most cases, you've got more than a thousand customers. And if you don't and you only have a thousand customers, maybe if you raise it 5,000, uh, 5000 if you raise the price $5, you're going to get uh, an additional $5,000 a year for that particular service or whatever it is. So if you go through each of the items of what you do, you want to make sure that you are competitive. But here's the thing. If you're the best at what you do, you don't have to be the cheapest at what you do. Um, a lot of times what happens is when we start our businesses, we end up trying to create the best prices that are out there. And uh, it, what happens is we fail to go back and realize that, you know what, once you start building your reputation and you have you you become known for excellent customer service, excellent quality, guess what? You can charge more for what it is that you do. People are going to be willing to pay more money. Um, and by the way, raising your prices sometimes can be the best thing for you. If, if you're working 50, 60, 70 hours a week and you just cannot take on any more customers and you're just like, Tammy, you know what? It's great. I could get more customers, but I could never handle them. I could never stay on top of them. Uh, I, I would break my business. I, I would kill myself with my success then you know what? You're right. You do not need any more customers. What you need to do is raise your prices because obviously you're busy because people love what it is that you do. So if you raise your prices, you can make more money by doing that. Now, are you going to lose a couple of people? Probably, but you already have all these people banging on your door to get in to your business. So if you lose one or two, three, three, you know, four or five customers, remember there's a long, long line of like a hundred more behind them that want to get in. Think of yourself as that exclusive nightclub that people want to get into. So if you do happen to lose, I don't want you to lose anybody, but if you do, then guess what? You've got more people coming in. There are people always, there's always going to be people out there that want to get your services for as cheap as possible. It's just the way it is. Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean you need to go to that level to be able to get that. Uh, so if if you can't, uh, you know, increase your customers and you can't handle any more, then I would definitely look at your prices as, as an opportunity. Uh, if you can take more customers and you look at your prices and you're still dirt cheap compared to everybody else, you need to raise those prices. So raising prices to increase your dollar average is absolutely a viable thing for people if they fit into certain buckets. If you're already pushing it and you're, um, you know, it just doesn't feel right, then don't look at raising your prices. Look at some of the other items that we're going to talk about. But I want to make sure that uh, if, if raising prices is an option for you, it definitely is one of the quickest, easiest ways to raise your ticket average and to bring more income into it. Not to mention the fact that if you raise your prices, it's actually one of the better things for your margins as well. Because typically when we raise our prices, that's additional money we put to the bottom line. So raising your prices is a good one and you want to go back and you always want to look at your pricing to make sure that yes, do you want to be competitive? Yes. Do you want to give away the farm? No. And if your services are beyond everybody else's, then you know what? It, it's okay to be a little bit more expensive. You know what? If you take like a handyman, for example, here in our town, I deal with handymen all the time. 
And I can tell you that their prices range all over. I got handymen out there that will just say, hey, it's a flat $20 an hour of what I work for you. And there's some of you listening right now as handyman that says, what the heck are they thinking? That's dumb. Uh, you know what? You're right. It just depends. It depends where you're at and what you do. If you want a, a, a basic person to install or do something, yeah, you can find them dirt cheap. That doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get great quality, uh, what it is that they do. Now, I'm not knocking anyone who charges that. What I'm saying is, typically when it comes down to quality, you need to look at the rest of the folks that are out there. So, um, you know, it, 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 it the flip also works, by the way. There's people out there as heady men, for example, that might charge $50, $100 an hour. And oh my gosh, their quality and stuff is horrible. Um, and I always wonder how they continue to get business. So just make sure that you really look at the quality of the service that you give and the products uh, and the quality, your on-timeness, your brand, all of that. If, if you're in a really good place, I think you've got a place for raising prices. It didn't mean to rattle on that that long. I guess I just I was trying to get out too much. All right. Uh, okay. We want to try to get our customers to spend more money. So here's another area that I think is highly um, missed. And uh, and that is what I call add-on prices. I want you to think of a grocery store. The last time you were at the grocery store, I want you to think of Walmart, uh, you know, even Home Depot, for those of you that go there on a regular basis. I want you to start thinking of these retailers that you go into. What's the thing that you notice when you go up to the registers? When you go to the registers, you get bombarded by all kinds of stuff, right? They want you to be able to buy a soda while you're up there. They want you to get gum, candy bars, beef jerky, uh, little Chotskys. Walmart will have that, all those little Chotskys underneath the candy and stuff like that. There's a reason they do that. The reason they do that is because they know that if you pick up something from that section right there, they just added another dollar or two to your ticket average. Um, and that's why they do that. It, it, and, and most of those items, by the way, are high profit items. They don't put stuff that they make no money on it. They put stuff up there that they're making like 70 cents out of every dollar type of stuff up there. So um, I want you to think about your business and your checkout area. That's one thing. We're going to talk about this in two different ways. Now, some of you already know what you're thinking. Tammy, I don't have a checkout. I'm, I go into people's homes. We're going to talk about you in a minute. Okay. But any of you that have a business where people physically come into a brick and mortar type of business, I want you to think of items that you can put at the front, at the register area that people might do. Now, are candy and soda an easy no brainer? Yeah, you can pick them up from Costco and stuff like that and sell them. Um, but I don't just think that. Think about your business? Is there something else that, you know what, they use your products or services within your brick and mortar. And then when they're leaving, it's something that you have at the front. So I don't know why this just popped into my head, but maybe you're at the salon and, you know, you get your nails done and stuff like that. And then at the register area, you have um, a bunch of different items that they could pick up right then that helps them take care of their nails in between appointments, whatever the case may be. So, you know, think about your particular brick and mortar and what is something that you can put at the register area to add to to that ticket thing. Now, with that said, uh, for those of you that don't have a brick and mortar and you can't use the the soda and candy type of analogy, I want you guys all to think of this. With your brick and mortar, you go into homes. Add on items. Add on items are a powerful, powerful thing. Uh, And and I think I did, and I wish I could remember off the top of my head what the episode number is, but you know, uh, add on items is something that and oh, wait a minute, before I even jump in add-on items, oh my gosh, Tammy, your brain's going in 100 miles an hour. I want to go back to the register areas and I want to share a story with you, okay? Um, when I was a store manager years and years ago, uh, one of the things that I did uh, to try to, because I, I was really trying to focus on how could I raise my ticket average. I had one of, uh, at the time, I was running one of the uh, smaller stores, uh, our building, literally too, our, our building was one of the smaller stores. So I had to try to figure out how I could get more sales out of that business. Um, we were going to be relocating into a bigger building, but in the meantime, I wanted to try to, how could I get more money into people's, into their carts? And that was something I was taking really seriously is like, how can I get them to spend more money while they were in my store? And there's a lot of different items that I'll share throughout here that I, I tried to do. But I remember one in particular, because I used to get teased about it. But what was funny was I got teased about it, teased about it. And then all of a sudden, everybody else started doing it when they started to see the difference of what was happening. And what I did is, as you know, when you go into a Home Depot, you've got the register areas like you do anywhere else. And what I did is I started putting these big crates, uh, these big um things in front of some of the registers. And I would just go find items within the store that I thought a lot of people needed to have. 
And for example, I remember one uh, bicycle hooks. They were really popular at the time. And, you know, those yellow uh, hooks that look like an, uh, uh, if you hold them upside right, they look like a question mark. But if you screw them in, they kind of look like an upside down question mark. But anyways, I bought like thousands of these things and I put them in front of a register. And guess what? I was selling the pajibas out of these things. They were flying out the store because people were picking up two or three of these things. And guess what? They were like 67 cents or whatever they were at the time. So here I am raising my dollar average up because I was getting probably every three or four customer to pick up one to three or five of these things and throw them into the cart. And then it started me thinking going, holy cow, these things are, I mean, I went to selling thousands. I went from selling like 60 a week to like thousands of these things. Then I became on a mission is how could I take all of my register areas and start finding items throughout the entire store that people would want to just pick up and throw in their cart. And, uh, you know, I, I did, I got teased all the time about how Tammy, you're looking like a little junkyard up here. You're doing this and that. I'm like, you know what? I'm selling it. And I would show the numbers and I would show what it was doing to my ticket average. And I'm like, look, is it, should it be every register? No. Did I calm back a little bit? Yes. Did I get hung up on the high of the entire thing? Yes. <laughs> but I will tell you, it worked. It's no different than, for example, when you go down the aisles of a Home Depot or a Walmart or anybody else, you see those clips on the, 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 you got the racking. They're called chip clips that go down the sides of the racking. They put them there because they know that you'll pick them up and you'll throw them in your cart, um, which kind of leads into the Adam's add-on items that I was kind of about to jump into a second ago. So sorry about that, that uh, hard change there. But those are what are called add-on items. So for example, if I go and I purchase something and I know that I need a battery for it, then why would I not put batteries at the same exact location of the items that need the batteries? Duh. You know, uh, there was a time, for example, when somebody would come in and buy a uh, garbage disposal. Well, when they bought the garbage disposal, they needed the plumber's putty. Why would we not put plumber's putty at the same place as the garbage disposals? Uh, duh. If it's something that needs to go on or something that's an add-on item to that, you need to make sure that you have that easy add-on item right there. You know, uh, now there's other ways to do add-on items. For example, you know, an add-on item could be something that, let's just say that you are a carpet cleaner and in your, you come in and you clean someone's carpets. Well, is there some kind of product that you could have that you can sell them at the end of it and say, hey, here's some carpet cleaner that you just put down before you vacuum and then you vacuum it up and it's going to help you with the, the life and the cleaning of the carpet. Is That's an add-on item. Is there something else that you can serve and get them to purchase at the time of doing your your service. It's just something else that you add on to that. Uh, it could be that, you know, for example, if you're, we'll stick with the carpet cleaner while we're at it. Uh, you're at the, you're at the home, they've hired you to do the basic clean. And all of a sudden you sit, you notice the smell of their, their pets. Um, you see Fido and the kitty right over there, or whatever the case may be and say, Hey, you know what, before I start, um, I noticed that, that you have some animals and I'm just curious. Uh, one of the things that I can offer is this enzyme that we put down as we do this. Uh, and it will help a little bit because I know we don't, we don't always smell when we're in the home with the animals because we get used to it. But if I put this down, it'll help with that. You know, whatever the case may be. So each and every one of you have some type of add-on item that while you're talking there. Now, I don't want you to come across like a sleazy uh, used car salesman that all of a sudden bait and switches and, and adds things up. But I think that there's some no-brainer things that when we're talking to people that they'd be willing to do. Especially because if you remember, you're solving a pain point at the time of your service. When you help somebody, there's there's some pain that you're trying to resolve. So if you take your add-on item and tie it into that pain point in some way, it definitely is going to help them out. And they're going to be more willing to want to purchase whatever it is that you do. So I want you to start thinking of add-on items. What are some things that you could, could add to that sale? Uh, an example I use all the time is has to do with septic. Um, if you're not familiar with what a, a, a person who cleans out septic systems are, if you're not on sewer systems kind of a thing, especially out on acreage in certain areas, you have these big tanks in your yard and that is where your waste is collected. Every five, seven, 10 years, whatever they come and they pump them. Uh, and it's a kind of a once and done kind of a thing, you know, that you're not going to use their services for another five, seven years. But if you are that person that does the septic and let's just say, uh, you've got some, you know, there's enzymes that people do. Some of you guys have heard of Ridex or whatever. You put it in once a month, it helps eat some of the stuff that's in there. You know what? Who's to say that as a septic person that you don't offer that at the time of service and say, hey, here's some chemicals that we highly recommend. Uh, would you like us to go ahead and um, add those to your order today before you go? You know, sometimes it's a, it's a convenience thing. 
if somebody can have add that to you right there while you're there, they're going to purchase it off of you. Could they go online and get it from Amazon and have it delivered? Yeah. Could they go to the grocery store and get it? Yeah. But if you can do it right then and there and, and have it as an add-on item for yourself, absolutely go for it. Let's just say you charge 35 bucks for 12 months out of the year. There's convenience. You got the entire 12 months in one shot, 35 bucks. And if you take that and you just get one person to buy that every week, now you got 52 sales of that $35 that you've just added on that you didn't have before. Let's just say you can get one a day done. So now you've got five or six a week at the 35 times the 52 weeks. Can you see how the numbers just continue to add up? Add-on items are huge. And now they look in a lot of different ways, which we're going to talk about. They'll kind of tie into some of these other items we're going to talk about. But please, what I want you to do is I re- I'm, I'm huge on the power of add-on items to raise your tickets. So I want you to start thinking of your business and I want you to start thinking of different ways and different things that you can do that you can add um, an additional item, an additional sale on top of whatever it is that you do. So with that said, I'm going to talk about a couple items that might fall into that that help you. Um, there's something called, you can do a warranty add-on. Um, you know, you can't go anywhere without being asked if you want to do the warranty on it. You know, it uh, it's ridiculous. If you go to Walmart and you buy a $4 electronic thing, all of a sudden they want to know if you'll spend another $4 to put to your warranty on it. No, I'll just buy a new one. Yeah, first off, especially with electronics, you know what, this thing's going to break and be renewed before you ever... Uh, have to use the warranty, but that just makes me laugh. But warranties, the reason that these places are adding these warranties to everything under the sun is this, it is almost pure profit. Okay. So this works not only to raise your ticket average, but it also helps your profitability of your business. Because here's the thing, if you get a hundred people to buy that warranty, the odds are you might have to come good on it for 10 people which is what it mathematically it's a huge thing that the number of people that actually use it is minor compared to the number that you can sell so you get these instant sales at the time and you also get to boost your profitability at the same time and you can pretty much create a warranty on almost anything if nothing else uh, Amazon and Walmart and stuff like that uh, Best Buys and everything else they've really shown that because they'll offer a warranty on anything Um, you know so you can you can think of different ways that that you could add an, uh, a, a warranty to it. Uh, you know, I was, uh, and sometimes a warranty and an add-on can kind of be very similar. Uh, and I'll, I'll use an example I used the other day. I was talking to a gentleman who has an HVAC system, uh, a, a, a business, he fixes ACs. And one of the things that we started talking about is his people. And we were talking about how he can keep his people busy through the entire year. So obviously there's slow times and everything else. And we kind of, it, it, this is all going somewhere. They all kind of wrap together in one shot because he's trying to find ways that he can help keep these people uh, busy through the whole year. So then I tied in a war- So I'm like, okay, well, let's kind of throw in a warranty slash add on. So now you're getting the benefit of more additional sales, but also creating some additional work that is tied to it that you can keep your people busy. So for example, one of the things we talked about is a, uh, a warranty, if you will, add on item where he says that when he does a service at a home, he offers it to them for say $120, $150, and that they will come out once a quarter and check the air conditioner and they'll just take a look at it, do a quick service, turn, tune up kind of a thing and look at it. Because obviously here in Arizona, we use our ACs quite a bit. So here's the thing. It's going to take what his guy could hop in there. Um, so he, he just has to take his basics tech that he's trying to keep on the books. He can send them into the house. Nine times out of 10, he's going to go through, check everything. He's going to be in and out in like a half hour. So uh, so even though, he, you know, he might be, if you take, let's just use a simple math, we'll go 120. So it's about $30 once a quarter that this comes out of. He sends the tech in for not even a half hour. So guess what? He's not even paying him that $30. So he's able to do that. He keeps the customer attached to them and in love with them. He gets the $30 that he collected in advance. He keeps his person busy uh, and he's able to do that. And by the way, odds are he's not honestly offering a warranty. He's not saying he's going to fix something unless it's already tied to the warranty he just for the business that he just did but he's able to keep that customer connected to him so then we go back to frequency right because now that customer is a loyal fan of this business so this this client is going to continue to come back and back but he was able to add on this additional hundred and and twenty dollars service and he just has to pop in uh four times a year just to make sure everything's working well and if it's not then guess what then they just go to the next phase of whatever it is if it's covered under the warranty they handle it if it's not covered under the warranty then guess what they get the business for that customer for the next one. So once again, it's just a, it's an add-on slash type of warranty. You can do all kinds of things with that. Hopefully, uh, 
I don't know if that's coming out right or not because it sounds weird in my head all of a sudden. But um, my main goal is to get you to spark something that you can do within your business. So if you can create something in your business that is a warranty that you guarantee something uh, or that you'll come back and you'll check on it, uh, it, it's a great way to collect the money in advance um, because you're able to not only raise your average ticket at that time, it does create that frequency like we said with that customer and it adds to the bucket from last week. So it's just a great uh, one-two punch, something that you could do. All right, uh, let me jump to something different. Uh, let's talk about upsells. We have all heard, would you like fries with that? Uh, there's a reason that McDonald's in different places ask you if you would like the combo or would you like the fries? Or would you like a larger drink? Those are all upsells. They know that if you say yes, they're going to make more money um, because it comes for another 50 cents, another dollar, whatever the case may be. It raises that ticket average. So I want you to start thinking of your business and what can you do to upsell? Now, sometimes the upsell might be the add-on item that we just talked about. In some cases, it might be that you have tiered services. You know what? Um, if you go to a drive through car wash, right, you've got three, usually at minimum, three things that you could do. You can get the basic where they basically squirt water at your, your car for $3, or you can get up to $9 or $12, $15, and they're going to throw on some wax, and they're going to throw on some bug spray, and they're going to throw on some, the, the things are going to whack your car twice instead of whack your car once whatever the case may be. So think of your business and your services and what can be your upsell. Um, because if you can get them to upsell uh, to the next level of stuff, you want to A, you want to make sure that any upsell that you do really does come at a true value. Because once again, we don't want to seem like a, a a uh, slimy kind of a service, but you want to have that ability to upsell. And by the way, another thing that an upsell does for you is it works the other way. Because remember, we talked earlier that there's always people that want your services for cheap. Well, great, have a cheap package. If somebody wants to go cheap, just create a cheap package. That'll solve that. And you can say, look, okay, if you want to pay only this amount, then this is what the basic level service is. And then let them make that decision because they might go, uh, no, I, I'll, I'll pay for the one that I was originally going to pay. So it gives you that option that if you're out there and you find that a lot of people are trying to get your service for the cheapest way possible, then create a plan for the cheapest way possible that gets you in and out and does very basic, but make sure it's very clear that they are not paying for X, Y, and Z, which is probably what it is that they want. It, it, it all comes down to communication, but um, the upsells are wonderful. You know what? When I worked at, when I had my ice cream shop, what did I do? Do you want sprinkles? You know what? Do you want candy on top of that? Do you want, you know, it, it, do you want a second scoop? You know, can we, can we make that a large, whatever the case may be, you know, every single business, you have something that you can do to have as an add-on, which by the way, an add-on is another version of an upsell. You know what? Uh, if you have a good, better, best, you, if you, you want to take the good to better, you want to take the betters to best and the best to the add-ons. There, there's always some way that you can go good, better, best. Uh, and I really want you to look in your business and say, do you have a good, better, best uh, in what it is that you do? Um, and by the way, a crucial one on this one is it's great that you know it, but you need to make sure your employees know it. Um, where I see a lot of businesses fail on uh, raising their average ticket actually has nothing to do with them. Uh, if you have employees of any kind, whether it's temporary employees, 1099 employees, or employee employees, uh, we really need to do some training on uh, upselling add-on items and stuff like that. Uh, because that's where we really fall down is it's not that we don't have these items. Some of you might be thinking, Tammy, I have all these things in place, in which case you need to go back. Do your people know? To, it's, it needs to be so seamless. It's just what they do. And a lot of times when we come back, it's, it's difficult. There is a, there is a, uh, it takes about two months to get people into the habit of doing it. It just feels awkward. It feels weird. You know, I remember when the first time I had asked everybody if they wanted to get a credit card, you know, it, you know, it feels slimy. It feels wrong, but you know what, after a while you just kind of work it in. Have you guys ever, here's like an example of it. You ever gone into say a Walmart and you know, Walmarts are famous uh, as some other businesses are, but they're famous for doing the collections, um, you know, for the, the local hospitals or St. Jude's or whatever the case may be. And some people just make it so seamless. They're like, okay, uh, they ring up your stuff and they go, would you like to donate a dollar to X, Y, and Z? 
and it's it's just it just flows and they kind of pull you in because they just roll it right into it whereas then you've always seen the other people that go um, um hey i hate to ask but would you be willing i don't know to to donate a dollar you know it feels weird and they're kind of giving you the out because they're so awkward with it that it gives you the out to be able to say no nah, i did it last week or whatever the case may be you know your people just have to know that it's a form of you know most people are going to say no but if you just make it part of the natural transaction upsells are 10 times easier so you want to make sure that your employees not only do you have the upsell items but that your employees are really comfortable with doing the um would you like fries with that it just naturally flows for them uh, another thing is bundling items. Uh, in some cases, bundling items is is very similar to the add-ons, but it's where you can put services together. Uh, you know, and and you know, if you have service X and you have service Y, uh, but you want to give an option of where maybe if they buy them together, they get a discount. Uh, and if you think about it, you actually do save money because you're able to do them. Bundling is great for if if it's a service-based business. Bundling is great when you can do them while you're already there because you're actually saving, um, you know, you don't have to feel bad about taking that discount because you're not spending any more labor. They're doing it at the same time, um, but you're able to add on additional sales by bundling it together. Same thing with products. If, if two things naturally go together, it only makes sense that you sell them together, um, you know, which it, which kind of ties to another one that I call the, the complete project. Uh, you want to make sure that people get everything they need to do that business. Uh, you might recall earlier, I mentioned the garbage disposal in the plumber's putty. Well, if someone buys only the garbage disposal and they get home and they find out that they need the plumber's putty, they're going to be ticked at you because they didn't give you the entire project. You know, you didn't let them know that they need the pigtail. You didn't let them know that they needed the plumber's putty. So now you've got somebody with a garbage disposal who can't install it. And now they have to, now they're mad because they have to come back and they have to get that. Um, you know, same thing. You guys do it when you guys go out to, to businesses to do things. You remember to grab all those items. Um, but did the business do a great job of bundling those together to make it easy for you to be able to have them? Uh, so I want you to think about your business and is there a way that you can bundle things together to to create more sales uh, or can you put uh, projects together? Can you advertise them that way? Can you just make it easy for your people to talk about them saying, hey, you've got this. Well, by the way, you're going to need this and this and this um, and to pull the whole project together. Uh, once again, that also comes down to you understanding it. But if you have employees, it needs to be very easy for them to know as well that they need to put them together. Um, when I had the plumbing department and uh, you know it was part of my normal Normal training. I let people know that if you had anybody that came by and they put a garbage disposal in their cart, you needed to make sure they had the other parts to the project. And I was crazy because I even went up and taught the cashiers that. I told the cashiers, I said, look, look I would do some training with the, my cashiers. Uh, here I am running the plumbing department. I'm out on the sales floor, but I went and I took the time to train the cashiers that, hey, if you happen to see someone come through your register with just the garbage disposal, make sure you ask them, do they have the pigtail? Do they have the plumber's putty to complete that project? And I actually had cashiers all the time that would be calling up the department saying, hey, can someone run me up a pigtail and can someone run me up a um, some plumber's putty for this person? And they would get it rung up at that time. So the more people you can bring into the mission, guess what? You're able to increase those sales. So think about that within your business and um, not only make sure that you have it available, that you talk about it, but you also have your employees able to do the same thing. Uh, finally, the last one that I want to talk about is your mix and what it is that you sell. Uh, not all things are created equal. In some case, it could be the mix of items that you sell. If you only sell uh, entry level, low end stuff, you need to look at your mix. And is there a way to add something that might uh create that good, better, best. You heard me talk about that earlier. Uh, you know, if, if your focus and your advertising and everything that you push out is the lower ticket item, I, I'm going to challenge you to change that. Uh, you don't always have to advertise and push the lowest, cheapest thing. Uh, you can go out there and set, mix that up a little bit. Maybe you move up to the better item instead of just the the poor item. You don't have to use the, the cheapest item to get them in the door. So maybe, you know, in your good, better, best, you advertise the better. And then when they show up and if they come in and they're asking for the good, you know, the, the basic, then you can, you have that as an option, but at least you get them coming in expecting the better. And if they, you can upgrade them at the time, even better. So look at the, the, the mix of what it is that you push. Uh, there's sometimes, and, and I had an example and it's completely jumped out of my head. Um, but sometimes when people come in looking for one thing, you want to be able to have the ability to say, Hey, that's great that you did this, but let me show you, um, a couple other options and then whichever one you want to go with. Um, 
but you know, sometimes it, it's the mix of what it is that you do. If, if, if you only sell the cheapest things, then you're only going to sell the cheapest things. So look at your mix and see if there's a way that you can increase your dollar average by switching up a little bit about um, the mix that you sell. If you only sell, if you sell 10 of the cheap one, 15 of the better and 10 of the highest one, see if you can move each one of those up five. So if you can get 15 of the best one and get your 10 people up to your next one, you just add more sales to it. Um, hopefully that's making sense. But um, listen, uh, this episode's gone really long. Uh, apologize for that. But hopefully you get some ideas of how you can increase your dollar, your your average ticket of what you can get out of people. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, the main thing is we want to try to grow your sales. And you're going to grow your sales either by getting more customers through your door, getting them to come back more often, or raising that ticket. Ideally, you want to try to do all three of them, find a mixture of all three of them. So when you sit down, today's action item is I want you to work on this average ticket. I want you to sit down and hopefully you've already had some ideas pop into your head. I want you to sit down. Today's homework is on your break, when you before you when you get done at the end of the day, whenever the case may be, I want you to sit down and think of ways that you can increase your average ticket. And you don't have to do every single one of these. If you if one of these stood out to you, one of these gave you an aha nugget, I want you to run with that. I want you to run and say, okay, I'm going to raise my average ticket by doing this. And by the way, put numbers to it. Um, when I talked about that septic inspection, you know, it's one thing to say, okay, I'm going to add on this um, this type of RIDEX stuff that, that people can buy. No, put a number to it. See what you can create and say, if I can get, you know what, one out of every five customers to buy this, then I'm going to increase my, my, my income by this much every week. And that means I'm going to increase it by this much every year. When I talked about those bicycle hooks and there were tons of other items that I did. You know what? I was able to put pen to paper and say, look, if I can get this to go, it became a game with me. If I could take this from 50 a week to a thousand a week, what would that do to my sales? And that's kind of how I looked at it is what could I do to create additional sales? Because I couldn't get more that many more people through the store, but I could get them to spend more money. And I want you to think the exact same way with your business is if you can't take on uh, more customers, how can you get them to spend more money? You know, um, and if you can take on more customers, you know, those are cold people. You got people right now using your business that already love, trust you. How can you get them to spend more money when they're with you? Uh, do not do it as a bait and switch. Do not piss people off by making things completely different. But there's a lot of legit ways that you can do to get them to spend more money. And by the way, if you're swimming in business and you can't take on any more water, if you will, and you can't take on more customers, look at your prices. I'm telling you, that's a, that's a huge thing as well. So, a lot of different things that you can do out there. Uh, really look at add-on items. A uh, lot of different ways that you can do add-on items. Uh, and uh, I, to me, that is a very, very powerful thing. So if you walk away with one nugget, look at the add-on items. I'm telling you, that's a great way to uh, raise your average ticket. With that, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. Um, so uh, by the way, if you like what you're hearing, getting some ideas, don't forget to join us over in the Badass Local Small Business uh, Owners Facebook group. There is a link to it in the show notes. Uh, make sure you hit subscribe. And uh, I will, I think I'm going to jump into something profit next week. If I don't forget it's something else, it really comes to me like the week before. Um, but I, I think I want to try to now take all these sales and how can we put more money in your pockets? Because if we get your sales up now, we got to put more money in your pockets. So we'll, we'll probably do something to do with that next week. All right. With that, I'm rattling and we know what that means. When I start to rattle, it's time for me to say goodbye. So I will see you on the next episode. Bye for now. Hey, badass business owner, before you go, are you sick and tired of working so many hours and still not being able to grow your business? Are you ready to start earning the income you deserve for the work you are doing? Do you have so many ideas and you just don't know where to start? Well, maybe you need a business coach. And guess what? I just happen to know one. Yeah, me. We can do a one-time strategy session or we can set up a six-week coaching plan. If you would like to learn more about this, just click on the link in the show notes or go to localsmallbusinesscoach.com slash work with me. You can take a quick survey so I can learn a little bit more about your business and then we can set up your free consultation call. Remember, I'm here to help. You do not have to do this alone.